Hi y'all and welcome back to the garden. So interesting weather. We are getting potentially our first freeze tonight. It is Friday, um, October 7th. And this is one of the earliest freezes I've experienced since we've moved into this house. Typically it's not till at least probably the third week of October. So I have been making a mad dash this week cause I knew it was coming. Uh, to get things into the ground. So I got all of my plants that were in containers uh, that I'd been just waiting and all the plugs into the ground this week. Uh, there's not gonna be much gardening today. It's actually 59 right now, so it's actually kind of nice outside. But what I focused on today was getting all of my hoses at least unhooked from the house. I had to remove all of my automatic watering system from my earth boxes. Uh, I need to cover my backflow device still. Uh, just for tonight and then next week it's supposed to be beautiful and in the 70s again so really odd weather uh, but tomorrow I think we'll start garden cleanup because after we have a first freeze a lot of this stuff's not going to look great so uh, let me know what you would like to see there as far as coming into this fall now that I've got nearly everything planted I need to start doing a little bit of work in the cut flower space for next year um, because the weather's getting cooler than I expected that project may have to wait until the spring too so we'll just see, have to see after this first freeze how the weather cooperates because you never know around here uh, what's going to be next. The garden itself is having some like weird because the weather's been so odd some of the plants are showing fall color some of them went straight to like burned leaves from the cool weather we've had already low in the We've had low in the 30s already, but we haven't actually hit 32 yet. So it's interesting to see how some of these plants are functioning. We have these uh, kindred spirit oaks up here, and some of them don't have any yellow, like this one right here. And then we have this one that has a ton of yellow and fall color already. I've got some astilbe that have completely like dried up and the leaves have fallen off. And then one right next to it still looks perfectly fine. So very, very odd weather transitions as we're going into almost winter it seems like it's when we went straight from summer into fall immediately and then now we're transitioning directly into cold just a few weeks later probably one of my least favorite things about ohio because i'm used to having more of a fall in alabama and i think some other places are experiencing this too this year though so not much of a fall and it's my favorite season so I don't really get to enjoy it very much up here which isn't fun but I'm glad I was able to get everything I need to in the ground before this first freeze. There's still like I said some things that need to go in the cut flower space but uh, I'm not too concerned about those items uh, and I just wanted to show you some things I've healed in so I do this every year it seems to always have plants left over but I have a number this year not as much as usual which is a good sign I'm trying to get better at this uh, and I need to come through and I'll probably finish cleaning up the vegetable garden tomorrow as well so I have a couple of boxwoods I put in here the green mountain that I mentioned uh, that I got for a dollar I'm going ahead and pot it up and we'll see how it does over winter developing a nice root system and then I'll probably plant that out front on the other side of the garage I mentioned in a few videos ago the thread branch cypress I did remove but I did keep them and so my idea for them is I might use them in containers next year. I think they'll be a really nice container accent uh, on flanking either side of a door or something similar. Uh, I did put the extra roses that I had here. These are the mango salsa, the two that I removed. They were declining really, really bad uh, under the front tree because they weren't getting enough sun. So if they survive this winter, I may move them elsewhere if they don't survive. They looked really, really bad anyway. On this side, I have a service berry that I actually got earlier this year at a sale for like less than a dollar probably. I purchased it as a flat. I potted it up. This might be something I continue to pot up over the next few seasons until I find somewhere to plant it out. Uh, and these are mini Mauvet hydrangeas and I'm considering just throwing these away. These have been in my garden three years. I've never been impressed with them. They come out a, a, just a little bit of mauve and then they quickly turn brown and this muddy green color and I've never liked them. I've moved them twice already. I did stick them in here after I dug them up from the south side garden over here where you've seen me add all those shrubs recently. And I don't really have anywhere to put them in the garden right now. So I'm thinking about just trashing those because they have not performed well. And I probably wouldn't recommend them 
for anyone else either. They've struggled um, in the garden in general and just the blooms aren't... Invincible Ruby, I think, is a better alternative if you're looking for that bloom color than Mini Mauvet, honestly. Invincible Ruby still transitions to brown probably quicker than I would like, but it does a much better job of holding that color. And it's a nicer color after it dies down than Mini Mauvet. I did come through and put all the covers on my fountains. This is the earliest I've ever shut them down in the year. I drained them earlier this week. We usually have pretty wet weather in fall and so I have a hard time draining them and letting them dry out before I get them covered, but it's been I drained them and it's been so dry and windy that they dried really well and so I just went ahead and stuck the cover on them today. For those of you who were interested in Leal, she is perfectly back to normal after her surgery now. Playing with her little sister, our big sister, Margo. In my last video, I mentioned how the winds have been really bad and drying and we've not had any rain in over two weeks now at all. Um, and because of that, I've had a lot of stress on plants I just planted, including some of those on the south side, even though I've been watering them, particularly the Japanese maple. So you just saw this in the last video and look how it has crisped up um, just in a couple days. So this could be potentially because we've had colder weather as well. None of my other Japanese maple have experienced this though, but I think it's been the really dry weather and winds. And so I think it'll be fine. It's just get out of the bed. This is what I'm having issues with the Springer Spaniels in the beds. They've broken these inkberry hollies for a number of years. These have only been in the ground well since last fall, but they broke them in the fall. They break them over winter when they're playing outside. This one broke all the way to the ground and did come up. And they just broke this like yesterday or the day before I noticed when I come outside. So uh, I don't know how these inkberry hollies are gonna fare. I have not been real impressed with them in my garden. I thought about doing an entire video on them, um, kind of explaining what I wanted to accomplish here and why I haven't been real successful at it. Uh, with this variety, so I'll think about doing that. Uh, I do have gym boxes at the back against this fence, and they've done much better, but I've lost uh, not quite half of the inkberry hollies, not just from the dogs. Some of them completely died. Um, they just don't tend to do great in our environment for some reason. They did come through and finish this border around the incredible hydrangea hedge, so they don't look like a whole lot right now, but I'm hoping it'll look good next year and so just kind of coming down we have a uh, sedge right here I think this is evergold or ever I think it's evergold it's a variegated sedge anyway maybe evergold these are tiarellas which are really really tiny I've got them as plugs and they have not grown really quickly hookahs some hookahs tend to do that too so generally they in my garden they sit a good year before they get going so planting them this fall hopefully they'll put on a good root system uh, and come through and put on a lot of growth next year. I do have lots of weeds in this bed. This bed also needs to be mulched. That's not something I'm gonna be doing this fall. Probably, it's probably something I'll wait to the spring. I've not had to mulch this bed at all in several years because I did it so thickly a couple years ago and I've not had a lot of weed problems, but you can see the mulch is finally starting to break down and I'm having some thistles and stuff come up that I need to address. So in this area, I've kind of just done it just kind of flows into one variety into the other. And so we have the Evergold Carex and then these Tiarellas here. And then we went to a Jacob's Ladder, a variegated Jacob's Ladder. You can see right here, looks really cute. I think that will be a nice wispy texture here. And then we come into some all gold Hakanakloa. So there's a small patch of it right here. This is Dragonfly Pig Squeak, Dragonfly Secura, also called Virginia, but the common name is Pig Squeak because the leaves are really waxy. And if you uh, rub them, they'll make a squeaky noise sometimes. Right now, they're kind of probably dried up a bit, headed into fall. Uh, we have some Autumn Brilliance Ferns under here, and then some more Hakanakloa. And so there's just kind of an ebb and flow of different perennials through here. These are all shade loving things, so I think they'll do pretty good. This area does get a little bit of sun. It's uh, almost five o'clock, so you can see it's just now starting to creep in a little bit of sun this time of the day. Otherwise it has, this is kind of a north facing, and so it has a lot of shade during the rest of the day. I did tuck some things in just to have a place to put them for right now. So I had a lot of hookra leftover plugs 
uh, and rather than them just throwing them away, I did place them under here because they sh are shade plants and hopefully they'll do a little bit of growing on in this location. I'm not sure, this was just kind of a filler so I can move them later. It was more to get them into the ground so they'll survive than actually a design choice really. Uh, and then everything's doing pretty good. I've tried to keep these watered because these have wilted pretty bad. This is the Tough Stuff AHA that I transplanted a week or so ago. And really the only thing that's changed since the last video that I made uh, is I did go through and pick out some big Hakanakloa from Grandma's Gardens. I got all they had left and I added it in this space as a filler. I think it'll do provide a lot of movement and so I still got to remove this bobo like I mentioned in the last video. But I got eight of them and I just placed them around. There's the valve box of the irrigation. So they will cover it kind of as they grow up. And it's just kind of a river of the, that flows through here. I think that looks really neat. And this area obviously needs a lot of cleanup too. But that's something I'm going to try and get started on after we have our first freeze is cleanup. So that essentially means I'll be starting cleanup tomorrow. Uh, so... Other than that, there's not a whole lot of changes. I did get these boxwoods in the ground from the last video, and I am going to shear them up a little bit, especially this one, because this one's growing really oddly. It's really tall, and I guess I could do like a cone out of it instead of a sphere, so that might be something I try, but these are a little more globular. Trying to wish my dahlias farewell for the season. I'm having a really hard time, though. They've done so well this year. I kind of got behind... Um, for the past few weeks of trimming off blooms because the weather's been cool and I knew they were going to be waning anyway and they have with the cooler weather did not put on a whole lot of new growth uh, they've turned around in some spots and uh, the buds are just not opening like they were previously so lots of beautiful things this year I never got around to making a whole lot of bouquets with them but they're going to stay in the garden this season the raised bed so i have started getting in the materials that i'm going to use to overwinter the dahlias uh, i picked up some things from menards the other day and i have something that's still coming from amazon um, that's going to take a week or so because it was back ordered to get in the dahlias need time to get a good freeze anyway and then a couple weeks afterwards so they can uh, die down and then I can cut them back. So I expect uh, when that item from Amazon comes in, which will be mid-October, that they might be ready to go ahead and cover for the season. So, uh, or get ready for, you know, winter anyway. So we'll be carrying you through that project. This is not something I've ever done before. I am in zone six. Dahlias are hardy typically to zone seven. These are also above the ground. They're not in the ground because I have a hard time growing dahlias in the ground because they tend to rot. And so um, it's just something that I'm going to be trialing. You can watch along and see how successful it is over the coming year. And if it is successful, maybe it's something you can repeat. Uh, but I do not like storing my dahlias. I've done so for the past two years. Even though I've had pretty good success, it's not a project that I like to uh, deal with this time of year and so we're going to be leaving those in the ground trying to give them as much protection as I can and we'll see cross our fingers and hope they do all right next year thank you guys for joining me and remember in a world full of hate be a light take care everyone bye